Welcome to Salzburg on the Austrian side of the Alps, a city known all around the world for its art and architecture and for the sound of music. In the second part of our journey through German Bavaria and Alpine Austria, we'll visit the magnificent Baroque city of Salzburg and the charming old town of Innsbruck in the Tyrolean Alps. I'm David Seldran, and together with my friends in Trafalgar, we'll discover the sound of music, the joy of art, the passion of faith, and the love of tradition in one of the most picturesque regions of the world. Salzburg and music, the two are inseparable. The city brought to the world of classical music Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who was born here in the 18th century, and some 200 years later, many of the key scenes in the 20th century Rodgers and Hammerstein musical, The Sound of Music. We're starting our day at the Hellbrunn Palace grounds, where one of the most memorable scenes from the movie was filmed. Every year, every year, over 300,000 people come to Salzburg just for one thing, to recreate the Sound of Music film. Now, this gazebo is actually a very recognizable landmark because it appears in the scene where the song 16 going on 17 was sung. Now, for true hardcore fans of the film, they might be thinking this gazebo wasn't in this palace. So what's it doing here? The original gazebo scene was filmed in a different palace nearby, but with thousands of fans flocking to the private property to relive the scene, the city decided to move the gazebo to larger grounds, which is how it ended up here. I am 16, going on 17, I know that I'm naive. Fellows I meet may tell me I'm sweet and willing. Don't worry, even if you're not a big fan of the film, which apparently most locals are not, you can still enjoy the sprawling park and views of the Alps from the Hellbrunn Palace's gardens. But for those who insist on visiting the actual location of the gazebo scene, this is the place, Schloss Leopoldskron, a beautifully preserved 18th century palace. The lake, the garden, and the terrace were also used throughout the film as the Von Trapp family's residence. Those familiar with the movie The Sound of Music will probably recognize this vantage point. A critical part of the film actually happens here. In fact, fans of the movie will go crazy in the Schloss because they'll recognize so many parts of the building from the movie. Now, honestly, I'm not a fan of The Sound of Music, but you know what? That doesn't bother me because this building, this Schloss, this palace is so beautiful in its own right, whether or not you've seen the movie. Indeed, forget the fact that none of the interiors were used in a musical, or that the Von Trapps never even lived here, because Leopoldskron is far more interesting than its association with the film. This was a family estate of the Prince Archbishop Leopold, the ruler of Salzburg in the 18th century. So magnificent, it was once considered the best example of Rococo in Austria. Music filled these halls long before the sound of music was filmed here. Archbishop Leopold's family even helped sponsor Mozart's career. Max Reinhardt, one of Europe's most famous theater directors, bought the property in 1918 
and together with the composer Richard Strauss, founded a prestigious Salzburg festival here. Today, Schloss Leopoldskron functions as a boutique luxury hotel that's part of the elite heritage hotels of the world collection. This is really beautiful. One of the best moments of the trip, in fact. And you know what? You could actually live here. Yes, this is a hotel. And if you're a guest of Trafalgar, you actually get to stay here for a night, even a couple of nights. Those not lucky to enjoy Leopold's Kronos intimately can always head to the historic heart of Salzburg, where many more of the locations from The Sound of Music were filmed. Memorable scenes like Maria's departure from the Abbey. To be out in the world, to be free, my heart should be wildly rejoicing. Oh, what's the matter with me? This facade of the Abbey appears in the film Sound of Music, and it's quite ironic when you think about it that this global blockbuster is actually not very popular in Austria, not even in Salzburg, where a lot of the scenes were filmed. In fact, when the producers wanted to film inside the Abbey, they were denied. The producers, however, were more fortunate with the rest of the city. In the film, Maria takes the Von Trapp kids for a musical tour through the Baroque streetscape of Salzburg, giving us a glimpse of its most famous sites, like the Hohen Salzburg fortress above the old town, and the Mirabel Palace, its flower gardens and marble fountains. Those scenes were shot in 1964, and yet, except for the cars and fashion of the streets today, Salzburg seems hardly changed from the 60s. That's what's so magical about this city. If you miss the sound of music on film, and a lot of people have missed it on film, here's something even better. In fact, so much better. It's Salzburg's way of mounting that very popular film from the 60s. It's the Salzburger Marionetten Theater. It's a marionette theater playing the sound of music, the greatest hits of the film. Though Salzburgers aren't exactly fond of the Hollywood film, they do adore their local marionette version, an art form that enjoys a long tradition in their country. But don't mistake this for children's puppet theater. In Salzburg, each performance is treated like a full-scale opera, with a proper baroque opera house a huge cast of 500-plus wooden marionettes, and professionals who work like magicians behind the scenes. <laughs> wow, this is such a treat. We're not only watching the sound of music done with marionettes, we're seeing it all done behind the scenes. It's really no magic here. It's just a lot of skill, talent, and some very old traditions. All puppets, costumes, and sets are crafted in the theater's workshops by the puppeteers themselves. No wonder the century-old marionette theater was listed as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage recently. Indeed, in Salzburg, the hills, or rather, the city, is alive with the sound of music. Though not with a Hollywood score, but of Austria's greatest composer. When in Salzburg, it's impossible to avoid this man over here who appears large in life in this statue. He is, as you might know, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And it often feels like the entire Salzburg is dedicated to this one man. Mozart, Mozart, Mozart everywhere. Natasha Santos Rivera, Trafalgar's local expert, helps me retrace the footsteps of the musical prodigy in her beautiful Baroque city. 
I think the two cannot be separated. Okay. We are the city of Mozart. I mean, of course. Uh, you see him everywhere. You see him in balls. You see him in, balls, you see him in, um, in souvenirs, refrigerator magnets. Exactly. Cafes are named after him. Everything is named after Mozart. The air you breathe. It's Mozart not just for tourists, for... right? There's a real pride in this man. Oh no, of course. There's a real pride in this man. There's a real pride in saying, you know, Mozart was born here, and you know, people come from all over and say Mozart loved Prague and Mozart loved Vienna, and he's like, yes but he was still born here. He was born here. <laughs> you know? So it, it's something that we keep. It's something that we like to defend and say, don't try to steal him too much. Any Mozart-themed tour begins at his home in the old town. And a few steps away at the magnificent Baroque Cathedral, the Salzburger Dome, where his father, Leopold, worked for the Prince Archbishop as official composer. Here the young Wolfgang composed church music, played the organ, and established himself as Salzburg's most promising musician before conquering the concert halls and opera houses of Europe. You can follow Mozart's footprints across town, from his favorite cafe, Tomaselli, to the graves of his sister, Nanerl, in St. Peter's Monastery, and those of his wife, Constantia, and father, Leopold, in St. Sebastian's Cemetery. To this day, there's no hard proof as to where Wolfgang was buried exactly, but here in Salzburg, Mozart seems alive, with his image everywhere. Even his balls, chocolate balls. Ah, this is such a wonderful Salzburg tradition. A coffee and a Mozart Kugeln. That's right, the famous Mozart balls. You might have come across this all over the city and in different colors, but this is the original. It's the first, or the first, because that's the name of the family that invented the Mozart Kugeln. The famous chocolate-covered pistachio marzipan balls were invented in 1890 by Paul Fürst, a Paris-trained chocolatier from Salzburg. His original Mozart Kugeln recipe remains in the family and hasn't been altered in more than a century. He wanted to, to create a, a new praline, um, which was a, a sphere around a ball, a chocolate ball, um, and he thought about it and, and uh, invented the new, his new method to put the ball of marzipan and nougat on a wooden stick and dip the ball into the chocolate, the liquid chocolate, um, and let it dry. Yeah. And after the chocolate is hard, had became hard, he removed the wooden stick and he has the chocolate ball with the oh, hole okay. and the last step the typical oh, okay. <laughs> sign the typical the characteristic sign of the original Mozart Kugel is the small hill for the closure of the hole and this is done with this uh, okay. paper okay, so he puts filling the filling in there. and he, with liquid chocolates he fills and the hole and yeah. back everything and still until today still until today nothing has changed Amazing. yeah You'll find copies of the original all over Salzburg and Austria. But in my opinion, Fürst's is still the best, made with pure natural ingredients and only available in Salzburg. The Fürst were the first to honor Mozart and the first to name other chocolates after their world-famous Salzburg heroes. Indeed, Mozart wasn't the only musical star who lived in Salzburg. The classical composer Michael Haydn, brother of Joseph, was the city's concertmaster. The world-acclaimed conductor, Herbert von Karajan, was also a native Salzburger. There are just so many traces of music all over Salzburg. Take this house over here, this building over here, number nine. There's really no marking here, but this was the house of Josef Moore, the composer of, guess what? Silent Night, Stille Nacht in German. Now that song is actually more popular around the world than anything Mozart did, or any of the songs in The Sound of Music. Heiligen. 
more simple German poem was set to the music of Franz Xaver Gruber, who also lived in Salzburg. Stille Nacht was first performed in a village near Salzburg on Christmas Eve in 1818, 200 years ago, on a silent night that might have been exactly like this. I've always believed there's a certain magic in the air in Salzburg, and this is exactly what I mean. When our journey through Alpine Austria continues, we bid Salzburg so long, farewell, aus Wiedersehen, adieu, as we make our way to Innsbruck for a final stop in our Trafalgar Sound of Music tour.